Hi everyone, this is Pastor Dan from Calvary Chapel Clelum in Washington. Today we continue to move through the book of Ephesians in the second part of this new series that I'm calling Walking in Love, focusing on what Paul says in chapter 5 verse 2 where he says, And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us. Last week in the introduction, we talked about the importance of being able to observe and follow a good example. So the first thing Paul says here is that we're to be imitators of God in love. Look at verse 1. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love. This is where you find the essence of the Christian faith. The God we love instructs us to love as he loves. Jesus said, by this will all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. He didn't say Bible knowledge, although that's important. He didn't say worship, though that's important. He didn't say church programs, no. He said love one another. The Greek word Paul uses here for imitators is the word we get our English word mimic from. It can be translated duplicate, mimic, impersonate, imitate, and follow. It means to act like. Children learn by imitation. Since God is the best educator, he used the method of imitation to teach his creatures. There are performers whose livelihood depends on their ability to impersonate modern personalities or celebrities. More money will be made the more persuasive they are. They'll spend hours observing a person to pick up on the smallest of behavioral cues. They'll spend hours watching video, listening to voice mannerisms. One such mimic will project the video right next to where they've installed a mirror on the wall. And then while they're watching the video, he'll stand in front of the mirror working on his impersonation until he gets it right. He'll spend hours listening to the voice inflections, watching the body mannerisms, seeking to be able to imitate that person. What I mean is you can't pretend to be someone you don't really know very well. It's impossible to model your actions after someone who you've never really seen before. If you don't know someone at all, it's impossible to really model your actions after that person. Paul says, be imitators of God as dear children. The obvious inference is we need to know God if we want to imitate him. The Apostle Paul uses the words as dear children for a couple of reasons. One reason is because it indicates motive. As a little child, I love my mom and I love my dad so much, I want to imitate them. I want to be like them. My desire is to fulfill their desires for me. The second reason is it's the result of a very near and dear bond. Kids who have a good relationship with their parents are more likely to want to emulate or pattern their lives after their parents. Several years ago in an anti-smoking campaign that the American Cancer Society was doing on TV, they aired a commercial that showed a young father sitting down under a tree with his young son. The father pulled out a pack of cigarettes, took a cigarette out, lit it, and he began to smoke it. He placed the pack on the ground at the base of the tree. The little boy picked up the pack and began to gaze at it curiously when the announcer said, like father, like son. Think about it. The whole appeal was based on this notion that kids will often imitate their parents. And that quite often is true, especially when they're young. When I was little, I can remember sitting in the bathroom with my dad, watching him shave. And I wanted so much to be able to shave like him. Of course, now I hate to shave. When I'd see my dad mowing the lawn, I really wanted to be able to mow the lawn just like he did. It can be a real sign of intimacy when your child wants to be like you. At the same time, it can also be embarrassing. You're driving down the road with the kids in the car and someone pulls out in front of you, cutting you off and almost causing you to run into the car next to you. And you blurt out, what are you doing, jerk? Did you get your license out of a Cracker Jack box? And then sometime later, when you're again in the car with the kids, it happens again. Only before you get a chance to say anything, you hear this little voice from the back seat saying, What are you doing, jerk? Did you get your license out of a Cracker Jack box? Again, the point is, if you ever hope to imitate God, you have to first know Him. To live like Jesus, you must keep His example 
in mind at all times. And we get his example before us as we study the Word of God on a regular basis. As we study Christ's response to the various encounters he has with people in the Gospels, we get a good idea of how we ought to behave and how we ought to treat others. It's probably a good idea to read straight through one of the Gospels every now and then. But as you do, pay special attention to the way Jesus deals with various people. And then ask yourself how you would respond if you were in the same situation. And then pray and ask the Lord to help you to respond the way he does when you find yourself in that similar situation. Pray, Lord, please empower me to imitate you in a similar situation. Lord, help me to be like Jesus was to the people in my life. In a way, it's like letting the life of Jesus be the guide that we use to trace out our own lives. And in, in our next episode, we'll talk about that, tracing out our lives. So again, our first point is the plea to be imitators of God in love. Next week, we'll pick up the next point, which is to look carefully at the example of love in verse 2. So I hope you'll join me for that. Once again, I hope this has been an encouragement to you. If it has, would you do me a favor, click the like button, and then maybe share a word of encouragement in the comment section. And if you want to be real nice, would you share this with somebody who you think might benefit from it? If you're watching on the Calvary Chapel Clellum YouTube channel, would you subscribe to the channel? If you're in the Clellum area and you don't have a home church, would you consider joining us on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. at 417 East Railroad Avenue in Clellum, Washington? Again, this is Pastor Dan from Calvary Chapel Clellum. Thank you so much for joining me today. May God bless you and keep you. And until we're able to get together, Again, next week, my prayer is that we will learn to walk in love with others so that we might honor our Savior in Jesus' name.